going to start in 2 Corinthians 9, and I'm going to read verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all good things may abound in every good work. And I'm going to key off the good work. Colossians 1.10, that we might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of him. And when it comes to the word fruitful and it comes to the word increasing, it's not just a little. It's in all, in all. And in 2 Thessalonians 1.10, It says that I, or we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of his calling. And, you know, a calling is not holding a microphone. It's not talking in front of millions or thousands of people. That is not a calling. But it is this, and it reads... um, and he wants you, and it says, and, he, and um, he wants this for you. He wants you to fulfill all the good pleasures of his goodness, mm. of his goodness, and the work of faith with power. So your calling is not just to receive his goodness, but a calling is to show his goodness. Yes. And to do it with power. Amen. It's for others no matter if it's just your family around you, but it's your world. It's your world around you. That's what your calling is. And I'm going to just read something that that I kind of read out yesterday, and I'm going to leave you with this. Take yourself out of the equation. Make the eyes, um, have the eyes to see me doing the work. This is Jesus. Imagine every time you minister or lay hands on the sick, that I, Jesus, am doing the work. Yes. Don't make it about your hands, your mouth, your words. He has asked, um, let's see, I'm sorry, your mouth, your words. Um, you, you, you. <laughs> Take that out of the equation. The only thing that he has asked of us is to be his hands, to be his mouth, and just believe in nothing else. That's it. I can have that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Uh, this this song is just on my heart. I just want to let's just worship for just a moment because it's all about Him. It's all about Jesus. And you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Sing that with me. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Jesus, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. For from you are all things, and to to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. Lift your voices now. Let's sing it again. Focus on Jesus. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Come on, sing it now. It's all about Jesus. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory, for from you are all things. For from you are all things, 
and to you are all things you deserve the glory one more time for from you are all things for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory father we worship you jesus we magnify you Jesus, we love you. You said if any of us are gathered together in your name, there you are right here in our midst. So Jesus, we honor you, King of kings and Lord of lords. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence here in this place to move amongst us, to move in us, to move through us. We thank you that where you are, there is liberty. We thank you that where you are, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. And I just declare this morning freedom. Freedom, freedom, freedom from distractions. Freedom from what we've experienced during the week and that's bound us, or, or, or bound us emotionally or that's affected us emotionally. Freedom from depression. Freedom from sickness freedom from Satan's power. You've declared this, Father, and so we just agree with your word concerning our lives. And so we engage with that word with our heart. We agree with that with our heart. And as we do, we just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're ministering that freedom right now. You heal broken hearts. You set the captives free. We preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The year of Jubilee, every debt removed, every debt to you, Father, removed, that now we're free as children in you. And Jesus, again, we honor you, that you may have the preeminence in everything that happens here in life of faith and in our lives. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord, this morning in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Come on, give him praise before you're seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are so good. Ah, it's all about him, isn't it? Amen. Praise God. Let me just tell you, um, here at the church, it's just, it's awesome. What's, what's amazing is just being able to be led by the Spirit of God uh, to be... Um, to be able to walk with him and, and, and hear him and to listen to him. Uh, and, 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 and so I, I, I want to I set up where we're going this morning by, by just sharing a couple of things that, that happened this week. Uh, because we have, well, Jennifer and I have discovered, and, and, and this is what we continue to, to share about, and this is where you are. You are blessed. Do you realize you are blessed? You are children of the Most High God. You are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That's what God says about you. You know, and, 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 and we start from a place that I'm a child of God. Say that, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. We start from a place that we are victorious. Say, now thanks be unto God, who always causes me to triumph. In Christ Jesus. We always start from a place that we are more than conquerors. Say that, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. I'm not trying to obtain victory. I'm not trying to get to that place. You're not trying to be, become that. You, you, you are that. Jesus is your victory. Jesus is your wisdom. Jesus is your righteousness. He's made, he's made you that way. And so we start from that place. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And the, and, and, and the big shift in our lives and the big shift in our thinking has, has, all, has been not, not just going to God to try to obtain something from Him, but rather recognizing who we are in Him. I'm telling you, depression, oppression, none of that can have an effect or should be able to have an effect on a child of the Most High God. That's right. That's right. Christians 
shouldn't have to be as medicated as the rest of the world. Now, the rest of the world, they don't have any solution. Thank God for good counselors. Thank God for uh, uh, good services that are out there to help to, to, to handle uh, you know, mental health care. I've got a customer uh, that is a large uh, mental health care provider, so I see the good that they are doing for people and the passion of the people in there. But I'm telling you, that's a natural way and a soulish way and a, 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 you know, to try to deal with, a, with, with a, a situation where really that the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. The spirit of life should be ministering a wholeness and peace. Wholeness and peace. I don't know why I'm talking about this, so this has got to be for somebody. Okay? Listen, Romans chapter 8, verse 11 says that if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal bodies. He will give life to your mortal bodies. Earlier this week, I had this sharp pain hit me right here in, in, on the right side of my stomach. And, and, you know, it's real easy. It's real easy when something like that happens just to, just to flippantly quote a verse. Because the verse is the magic formula. You know, and so I want to just say something so that I, you know, it's going to quickly, no, 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 you, listen, your heart is the gateway to your, to the rest of your body, see, and so it's not, it's not just what you say, when, even when Jesus was talking about speaking to the mountain, he said, therefore, I say unto you, uh, uh, well, he, he said, he said, whatsoever you say, well, I see, have faith in God, for whosoever shall say, unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, this is Mark eleven twenty three. but shall believe, where? In his heart, that the things which he says will come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he, ha he says. And so really the condition of your heart determines the quality of what you say. The condition of your heart determines... Um, the, the results that you get, really, in your life. And so Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, he says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. Now, it's quick, it, it, it was easy in that moment to just quickly say, ah, by his stripes I'm healed. But that's just quoting a verse, that's just shooting it out there when I'm dealing with the pain. You know what I did? I stopped for a moment. I engaged with the finished work of the cross. I said, I said Father, I just thank you that right now, Jesus bore my sicknesses on his body. I visualized it. I saw it. Because the first thought that, when you get a pain right there, what's the first thought that hits your mind? Uh, your, your appendix. <laughs> then after that, it's by stripes you're healed. <laughs> you know. And so, and so, I, I, and so instead, of, instead of being flippant about it, what, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a kingdom son. <laughs> I live in a kingdom where appendicitis has no legal right or, you know, and I'm not saying that's what it was. I'm just telling you it was a sharp pain. And so I said, you know, Father, I just thank you that Jesus took it. And so right now, right now, I thank you. And so, see, and, and so here's what I see. Um, a lot of times, uh, I'm just giving you some practical guidelines, some, some, some help, okay, for a moment. A lot of times what, when, we, when, when we're talking about healing by his stripes, I'm healed. Get a picture of this. Or when we go to the Lord in prayer concerning our, our life, I, even, when you, even when you say, Father, I, I thank you that I'm healed, a lot of times we still see it as an external thing. Yeah. That the power of God will come on us to heal us. Okay? But Romans 8, 11 shows us something different. All right, so you, you got to see it. Let's bring that up on the screen. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, dwells in you, not dwells outside of you. See, now, you've got to become spirit inside-minded, Jesus inside-minded, that you've got the dynamo of the Spirit of God that literally raised Jesus up from the dead living on the inside of you. You start there. That's my starting point. See, 
The Spirit of Him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead will also quicken or give life to your mortal bodies. Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water or rivers of life, water that gives life, life, life flowing, flowing from inside out. Okay, so, and that does, it's not just flowing inside out just to other people. That's part of what it's for, but it's to, it's to minister to every area uh, uh, the whole time. See, somebody yesterday at prayer uh, was talking about how uh, we are to um, meditate in the Word day and night and, and, and the Word of God. And it says that in, in Psalm uh, 1, that you'll be like trees planted by the rivers of water. Well, that's now, now the Word of God lives on the inside of us. And the rivers of water is there and it says it gives, it gives life. It gives life and, and every leaf, not a single leaf is going to wither. That, Sometimes we're concerned about the big things. We're, we're concerned about the main thing and the branches. But what about the little things in your life that, that are just on there on the ends of the branches, you know, that we just let go and we let Satan come into or, or we just say that those things are important? No, the Spirit of God is on the inside of you to give so much life to you that every little thing that concerns you is being ministered to is being given life to. And so, and so I said, Father, I thank you. I thank you that the Spirit of God, that your very Spirit is on the inside of me right now and it's giving life to this area of my body. Pain, you've got to go in Jesus' name. Every organ, you function right in the name of Jesus. But, but I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is giving life to it. The kingdom is operating in that area of my life. It is more powerful than anything that would happen in this natural. That's right. Amen. 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 I, I just received it. I just took a moment. I was intentional about it. I had purpose. And just, you know, and within just a few minutes, pain completely gone. No problem. Praise God. I want to say the same thing as it, as it, as it comes to uh, dealing with, with, with depression, dealing with oppression, dealing with uh, even if it's suicidal thoughts or anything like that, um, that that does not belong to the child of God. And, and so, and it's not for you to be under condemnation over it. It's, the question is, is how do you overcome that? Same way, same way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your life. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Listen, as I pray this, I want you to just to receive it right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that I am your child. Father, I thank you that your word says I am more than a conqueror through him that loved us. Father, I thank you that the Holy Spirit is on the inside of me. And you said that in the, with the Holy Spirit that there is peace and joy. And I thank you now that Spirit of God, you're my comforter. That's what your word says. See, what am I doing? I'm agreeing with what God has said. I'm agreeing with, I, I'm going to stop agreeing with what's created the, the thoughts that has caused me to be depressed, the thoughts that have caused me to, to, to feel help, hopeless and helpless the thoughts because what I'm doing there, when, when those thoughts come in and I dwell on those, what am I doing? I'm now agreeing with, with something that is different than what God has said. Amen. Now, for me to experience the God kind of life, I have to agree with what God has said. Amen. I want to say that again. For me to experience the God kind of life, I've got, to, I've got to grab a hold with my heart and agree with what God has said about it, regardless of what I, what I feel like. Amen. Now, Satan, Satan wants to keep you firmly rooted in your past. And the reason is, is because your past is all the information he has about you. So, he wants to keep talking to you out of the information that he, that he has about you. And as long as you keep staying there, then he's got you. 
But see, God has already declared something about your present and your future. Something that Satan doesn't have insight into. And so if you'll just forget about what he's saying about your past and start agreeing with God about your present and about your future and let those be your thoughts, then, then depression has to leave. Oppression has to leave. You won't be thinking about uh, uh, taking your own life because things aren't good for you. Uh-uh. You are now firmly planted in the kingdom of God. And so what, and so what you do is you got to know God has declared that he has a purpose for your life. God has declared good things for your life. And, and regardless of how bad it seems right now in the natural, I've got to firmly stake, uh, uh, you know, put a stake in the ground, firmly stay planted in, in what God has said about me from that point. Because here's what I know. When I keep that pressure on the Word of God, and when I believe what the Word of God says, my circumstances have to change. They, th this natural has to, has to submit to the Spirit. This natural was created out of Spirit then this natural has to submit to the Spirit. But what I've got to do is, is, is I've got to be committed and submitted to the Spirit. Did you hear that? Uh, let me say it again. This natural has to be submitted. It will be submitted to the Spirit realm. Why? It was created out of it. But for it to be, for my circumstances, to, to line up with what God has said, I have to first be submitted to the spirit realm. My heart has to, has to believe what God has said. And, my, and, and, and the love that he has for me. And the moment that I, I believe that, I have just opened the realms of heaven to come through my heart into my life. And now everything has to start working for my good. Everything has to start being turned for my good. I don't care what the devil meant. I don't care what people meant. God will turn it for your good. But it's because you've changed your mindset. You've started believing what God has said. Amen. So receive that. Hallelujah. Uh, and so, um, I, 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 tell, I tell you what, I mean, we had an amazing Wednesday night. I told a story about uh, we was at the, at the Love Lady Center and um, ministering to these precious women. Uh, and, and the Spirit of God, man, just uh, he said he wanted to heal. And so we just started off uh, just, just laying hands on the sick. And this one woman, man, she, she had a problem with uh, a, a sciatic nerve, so much pain. And I'm telling you, uh, y'all really need to watch Wednesday night. But I, I'm telling you, um, when I laid hands on her, I said, look, I said, bend over. She bent over, came back up. I said, how is it now? She goes, well, it's better. I said, well, we're not, we're, we're not ready. For, we don't want better. We want best. In the name of Jesus, I command that sciatic nerve to, to be made whole and for the pain to go. I said, now bend over. She bent all the way over, and she came back up. And she goes, oh, my God, there's no pain. I said, try it again. I said, start trying to make it hurt. She started bending over. She bust out in tears. Oh, it was so amazing. She's just like, uh, and she, she cried through the rest of the service because she, she was free from pain for the first time. Listen, that's what we're called to. Every one of us. Every one of us. But I want, I, I want to talk to you about this walk in the Spirit for a moment. I'll get to my message in a moment. I'll just give you a quick version of it. Um, because these things, these things help. These things help. Just the goodness of God. We were in a meeting that was uh, downtown this week, um, and uh, people had come from all over to this meeting. And, and Thursday night, uh, at the end of the meeting, there was a, a, uh, a Chinese family that I, I saw. Uh, and, I, and, and, and I was kind of drawn to, to this older gentleman. Uh, and I, I felt in my heart that, that, that the Lord wanted me to talk to him. And, but they were praying together, and, and, and some things were going on there. And, and, and then um, I got interrupted by a couple of people that I knew there, and, and we were kind of in a hurry to leave. So I, so I just, uh, maybe tomorrow when I'm here. And so I just left. And, and, and boy, but even while I was leaving, I was just like, oh, I'm, 
I'm missing it. I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to talk to him. I'm supposed to, but no, we're we're in a hurry. You know, guys, don't do that. <laughs> it's not good. If you feel that prompting, I don't care. I don't even care if it's wrong. That's See, here's here's the secret. Here here's one of the things that that we've learned, is any time that I even feel impressed to do something, I just do it. If I'm not sure it's God, I don't care. I'll just go do it. I would rather be wrong than miss God. I would rather be wrong than disobedient. Because at the end of the day, it's not about what people think. Like I had a guy during the meeting come over to me during worship and said, Hey man, do you, do you have pain in your left knee? I'm like, no. He said, well, I guess I missed it. Can I just pray for you? Absolutely. I appreciate his willingness to step out on what he thought he was hearing from God. Would to God that we had more people, and that's who you are, people with, that are courageous to step out and to boldly step into what God has said. So I've learned that I've learned how to hear the voice of God because of my willingness to step out on anything that I think is God. See, so many times we want to know it's God before we'll step out or before we'll obey. Don't do that. You hear his voice, just go. Anyway, so I felt like, man, I have really, I, I, I've just messed up. I felt bad about it all the way home. I've, and so I looked for him the next day, couldn't find him. I, 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 I felt bad about it the whole next day, which is Friday. I got home Friday night and I was so upset. I was so agitated. There were things that had gone on that day. I was just, ah, oh, I spent, and so what did I do? I didn't go to bed to try to get rid of the agitation. I prayed in the spirit for the next hour. I went home and I said, we got we to resolve this. And I had to resolve some things with the Lord. Don't just be passive. Engage with God on things. It's life in the spirit. Next morning we came here for prayer. Thank you all. I'm telling you, prayer is awesome on Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock. Uh, you may get tired of hearing it, but I'm going to keep pounding it into you. It is awesome, guys. It's amazing. And so we came in here, and I was still feeling agitated, you know, again, still. And, and, and the source of it, and I told Jennifer, I said, I think it's because I didn't talk to that Chinese family. And so, and so uh, uh, I came in here, and started, we started praying. Started praying. And a lot of times when I pray, man, the Lord just starts talking to me about the service today. And, you know, I get all of this amazing insight. And, you know, and, and it did not happen that way. And, and the Lord started saying to me, Mark, I just need you to rest. I need you to rest in me. Stop being agitated about stuff and stop, stop condemning yourself over disobeying me and stop doing that. Stop looking at yourself. I just need you to rest. And he took me to Hebrews chapter 3. He took me to Hebrews chapter 4 where it talks about entering into his rest through, you know, through believing God. Let us fear lest, you know, therefore a promise of entering into his rest. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Any of us seem to come short of it. You know, and he talked about those that were coming into uh, uh, the promised land of, of rest, of, of land flowing with milk and honey, the, the Israelites, that they did not believe and they could not enter in because of unbelief. And it says the word of God did not profit them, not being mixed in faith in them that heard it. So let us therefore you know, labor to enter into rest. So you know what? I sat right over there um, and, and I just sat down and I just prayed in the spirit. Father, I just enter into your rest. Father, I'm not taking the care of these things. Father, I just, yeah, thank you, Lord. Father, I just, and just praying and all of that. And, and so as far as I was concerned, prayer was just for me. You know, at that moment. So we got up at the end to share. I said, guys, listen, prayer was just, for, you know, God was just ministering some things personally to me. And, uh, and this is what is ministering to me about rest. Do you know every single person that got up to share said, well, this is what the Lord said to me, don't be distracted. Wow. Uh, uh, Toby Hicks said, God told me to come to prayer this morning. So I walked in, I said, why am I here? He said, so that you get rid of the noise. Wow. All of these different words, I'm like, I I'm tearing up. I'm like, oh my God, God has, has such an amazing plan. So, so we left from prayer. And, and, and so we, had to, we, we gave our tickets to this meeting to uh, Justin and Olivia and let them go to the meeting because we were here at prayer. And so we went over there to, to meet up with them. I wanted to buy some books and everything. 
And so while I was waiting for them to get out of the meeting, I went into the books and, and, and bought some books. And as I came out, there was two or three of these Chinese people right there. And I thought that they were part of the same family. It was a bigger group the other night. So I just went up to them like, I'm not going to miss my opportunity. So I went up to them and, and I said, hey, how are you doing? Oh, we're doing very fine. I said, uh, where are you from? You know, Maryland. Okay, you're not from China, so Maryland's okay. Um, and they said, what about you? I said, well, I'm here in Birmingham. I pastor a church here. Oh, okay, very nice. And that was it. Big fail. No, 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 nothing, you know. It's like, okay, so there we go. So anyway, so I'm just standing there still waiting for them to come out, and that, and the, and that group came back over to me. Would you pray for us? I'm like, yeah, I'll be glad to. What do you want me to pray for? And there were some things in their ministry and things like that. So I just prayed for them. I thought, well, this is what the Lord wanted me to do. So thank God. Jesus, aren't you so good? And I started talking to the lady. Um, and she said, I said, now, were you here with a bigger group of people? Yeah, that was my whole family. My father, we just found out, uh, has been diagnosed with cancer. <clears throat> And so we came, and he's an opera singer in China. And I said, well, I don't see him. I said, but I want to tell you, he's the one that the Lord highlighted to me on Thursday night. They came so that he could get prayed for to get healed. And so... She said, well, he's a, she said, they said, the reason they wanted me to pray at that moment was they were about to leave and go back home. They were, that was the last time that I could have possibly seen them. I showed up at the right time, at the right moment. God brought them across my path. I said, well, I said, where's, where's your father now? He's at the hotel. Would you come with me and pray for him? Yeah. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> I said, absolutely. Jennifer, you're just going to have to wait on lunch, baby. I got I to gotta obey God this time. Listen, I went there, so gracious, he didn't speak any English. I did ask him, I said, so do you sing? He goes, no. <laughs> so I guess so. It was awesome. So gracious. Prayed for him, laid hands on him. It was a divine appointment. But even when you think you've missed God, even when, if you'll just stay in that place, if you'll just stay in that place of just receiving, yes. just stay in that place of rest, God can redeem it, God can cause, God can restore. What if, what, if I, what if I had stayed agitated? What if I had stayed self-condemning? What if I had stayed, oh man, I've just so messed up. What if I stayed in that place? And I think that there's a lot of people here that have stayed in that place in their mind. I miss God here. I miss God five years ago. I miss God 10 years ago. I should have done this. I should have done that. That's the devil trying to keep you in your past. But I'm telling you, if you will rest in him and if you will trust in him. God is the restorer of all things. God is the restorer of your life. God is the restorer of your destiny. And if you are ready to do kingdom business, he will put you in the place that you can be effective and that he can work through you for somebody else that came all the way from China to get healed. There's nothing like the life that we get to live. Nothing like living by the Spirit. Man, it's amazing. I don't want my witness and my testimonies to be testimonies of a year ago, testimonies of five years ago, and telling the same stories of when it used to be this way. I want to experience the life of God. I want to walk with Him. I want to yield to Him. I want to see Him move every day of my life. And that's the destiny for you, for every single believer. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Now, this morning, I share that to, to encourage you to, to, I mean, because, you know, I messed up. But God's grace is greater than my mess up. Amen. See, but if I didn't stay in that place, 
I'm going to bring up some notes. I want to read some things to you quickly this morning. What I want to do, uh, I've been t t talking on a series, and I'm going to go through this um, rather quick so you don't have to worry about getting out too late. Um, <laughs> it's going to be fine. So, uh, so I want to start talking to you about some things. You got, you know, you got the goods. Say, I got the goods. I got the goods. You got everything you need for life and godliness. God's already given it to you. Jesus is on the inside of you. His spirit is there moving through you. Um, so as mature saints, as mature Christians, I want to talk to you this morning a little bit and start talking to you about how to minister to other people. So many times we come to church for ourselves. But God has given apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the equipping of the saints for the, you know, and for the work of the ministry to equip. This is an equipping church Amen. for you to, to do what God's called you to do, Amen. not just get here just so that God can do something for you. He's already done everything for you. That's right. uh, I, I, I want to go off on this tangent, but, uh, but I'm not going to. So listen, how the, uh, Peter says this, always be ready to give an answer. To people for the hope that you have and 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 the struggle a lot of times people have is I don't know what to say I don't know how to talk to people about the things of God um, and and when they ask questions I don't know how to answer those questions so I want to give you this morning uh, uh, kind of start this thought of, uh, uh, of of taking the gospel and putting it uh, and framing it in such a way that it becomes very clear in your mind so that so that you can so that you'll be equipped to answer just about anything that's asked of you that's right. so that you can really teach them about these things okay i was teaching this uh it, just by inspiration of the holy spirit to to the love lady center um and and the girls came i've never heard anything like this before and they've been and they've been in class after class after class after class but this created such freedom in their thinking that I thought, man, I need to get this to the rest of the church so that you can, you know, start saying the same thing. Help them out. And so, let me just say it this way. All of humanity, and you'll hear things that I've said, little bits here and there, I'm just putting it all together. It's about the simplicity of the gospel. It's about the simplicity of the gospel. You don't have to overcomplicate the things that you share with people. Because at the end of the day, it's the Word of God that will set people free. The living Word of God. You're not the one that's their Savior. You're not the one setting them free. What you need to do is let the Word do its work in their lives. God's the one that draws them. I am just the one that's planting the seed or watering the seed. I am co-laboring with Him, but He's the one that does the work which takes all the pressure off of me, okay? I just need to be obedient. I just need to say yes. We talked about that last week. All of human history, all of human history, from the very beginning to now, is revealed and wrapped up in two men. Two men, okay? Adam and Jesus, there is no in-between. We could get in there and we could talk about Noah, Abraham, the law. That's the, you know, all the things that happen to bring us to Jesus. But, but in its simplest form, all of human history is wrapped up in two men, Adam and Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. Let me give you a couple of scriptures real quick so that you see this. 1 Corinthians 15, 45. And so, let's, let's bring it up on the screen. 1 Corinthians 15, 45. As they bring it up, I'll go ahead and read it. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, talking about Jesus, was made a quickening or life-giving spirit. First Adam, last Adam. That's it. Okay? You start there. Romans chapter 5, verse 14. Look at this. Romans chapter 5, verse 14. Nevertheless, death 
reigned. They'll get it up in a moment. Romans 5, 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. But look at this. Who is the figure of him that, is, that was to come. Talking about Jesus. That Adam was really like Jesus that is to come. Okay? Um, so you see the similarity there. The simplicity of the gospel. 1 Timothy chapter 1. I want to, I want to read some things to you and then we're going to dig into this. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 1. I want you to see what, how, how Paul was responding. So again, it's about simplicity. Say simplicity. Say, keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. Kiss, okay? Keep it simple when you're ministering to people. If they need healing, heal them. Don't talk to them. You know, somebody asked a question one time. I got a sister-in-law that, uh, that she is, uh, uh, man, she's sick, she's sick. Uh, and I've been giving her healing scriptures and giving her healing scriptures. What do I do? Stop giving her healing scriptures. Heal her. Hello, are you there? We want to. We want to. We want. We want them to do their own work, because we don't think that we've got what it takes. No, just go over there and and heal her. Operate. Don't don't leave it up to her. Engage with the Spirit of God. Wow, y'all didn't like that, so we'll go on. <laughs> Paul had this mindset, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. It's one of my favorite scriptures because I feel this way. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. You can just sense the gratitude that Paul has. Who was before? It's not who he was now. This is who he was before. A blasphemer, a persecutor, injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in my unbelief. You realize that Paul was responsible for the first Christian to be killed? Not just killing Christians, he was there as a witness and was agreeing with Stephen. And he heard Stephen as he's being stoned. He heard him say, Father, don't lay this sin to their charge. Ah. Oh. If anybody could be depressed about what he did, Paul would be that person. Paul could go over and over in his mind what he did to the church of God. How he killed and how he dragged families into jail. I was a persecutor, injurious. Verse 14, And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Understand this, there is not a single person that you, that, that, that's in your life, that's at your job, that you have contact with, that is not worthy of the love of God. That, has been, that is not worthy to be... To, to, to be talked to about the love of God, to be shown the love of God. I'm telling you, you know, when people stab you in the back, when people do you wrong, when people say wrong things about you, that's nothing compared to what Paul did to, to, to other Christians. That's nothing about that. And yet God redeemed him. Yet God chased after him. Yet God said, I want to show, I, I want to use Paul as an example of just how much I love everyone. Amen. And, to, and, and, and so it's got to start with you seeing people around you the way God sees them. And not categorizing them. And saying, well, I, I'll go talk to these because they'll listen, but I don't think this person is even cares anything about God. He may not care anything about God, but he's the one that needs to hear about the love of God. The grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, 
which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying. Here's the simplicity of the gospel. And worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Now, he's simply just contextualizing the fact that that's who he was. He's not saying that he's still, he's not identifying himself now as an ongoing sinner because too many other scriptures show that he identifies himself as the righteousness of God. But he's putting this into the context of who he used to be. Howbeit for this cause, I, for this reason, I love the way that Paul sees it. I, I obtained mercy that in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth how long suffering he is. I was messed up. I persecuted the church. So Jesus said, I'm going to use Paul as an example so people can see just how long suffering and how much I want to see my people saved. It says, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. And just he just couldn't stand it. Now unto the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. It's the simplicity of the gospel is that Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. What does that mean? I'm going to read through this real quick and then we're going to start digging into it next week, okay? All of human history, I said, is revealed in the lives of two men, Adam and Jesus. Adam was created in the... So here's what I'm going to do like God. I'm going to declare the end from the beginning. A lot of times, you know, you preach a message and then there's a conclusion. I'm going to go ahead and give you the conclusion of what we're going to start digging into so that you've got the foundation for it. Okay? All right? In the beginning, so here, here it is. Here's human history summed up in, in less than 10 minutes. Can, do you believe I can do this? Yes. Wow. How many of you believe I can do this? How many of you say, no, he's, he's going to bust 10 minutes for sure? Yeah, I, that's what I thought. All right, all right, here we go. Um, all of human history in 10 minutes or less. God created man, Adam, in his image and in his likeness and breathed into him the breath of life. God gave Adam authority and dominion over this earth. God, Adam, Adam was spiritually alive. Adam was in relationship with God. And because Adam wasn't just a natural being, see, because God formed him out of the dust of the ground, that's natural, but then breathed into him out of himself his own, his own spirit. That, that caused him to be spiritually alive. That's what, created, that's what distinguishes us from animals. Okay, we've got the breath of God on the inside of us. Now, uh, um, Adam, as, as soon as, as he came alive, he now began to rule the earth and operated from, a, from the spirit realm, not the natural realm. Okay? Nine minutes. All right, so, so, so what happened is, is, is the, the, the natural realm, this earthly realm, was to be servant to Adam and Eve who ruled from their spirits. Why? Because spirit created natural. So you've got to understand this. Now, Adam and Eve, as you know, they sinned. God said, I don't want you to eat of this one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And, and so Adam and Eve, when they ate of the tree and disobeyed the voice of God, what happened is by through their authority, they allowed sin, this is Romans chapter 5, they allowed sin to enter into this world and, G and God said, in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. They died, not physically, but spiritually that day. Uh -huh. They were separated from God that day. They were separated from his life. They became spiritually dead. We're going we're gonna to go through all the scripture next week about this. So just trust what I'm saying. Now, they became spiritually dead. Sin came in. And so because they became spiritually dead, they now only, had to, they only could live naturally. They no longer had, they, they, the, the earth no longer yielded to what they said because what they said was natural, it wasn't spiritual. You see that? Okay? So it wasn't just about words and it wasn't just about authority, it was about authority and words spoken out of the spirit. 
That's why spiritual, that's why this thing is so important. Spiritual death took place and it stopped them being able to be an authority. And so what happened is sin, which is a spiritual force, and death and Satan came in and took over. And so every person born in, uh, as a result of that were, was born with Adam's nature, which was spiritually dead. You were born dead. You were born dead spiritually, separated from the life of God. Okay? And, and, so, and, and, and you were born into slavery. The Bible says that we were all born enslaved to sin. We were just enslaved. We thought we were free, but we're not. And the reason why people have been addicted and the reason why people have experienced sickness and the reason why disease has run rampant and the reason why there's been so, many, so much mental uh, illness is because man has tried to overcome that from a natural standpoint and it's a spiritual problem that needs to be dealt with. Because we can only rule if we are spiritually alive. All right? And so sin, death, and Satan has been ruling over humanity because of their fallen nature and because they've been natural. And the only way, because God gave authority to man, God doesn't take it back. The only way to fix that is man needed to become spiritually alive again so that he could start operating out of the spirit and live that way again. Amen. But the only way to do it was for there to be a man who was spiritually alive. Well, none of that could happen as an offspring of Adam. And so what, what, what happened is another man was born, whose name is Jesus, who had the nature of his father, God. God, you know, the word became flesh, dwelt among us. And so the nature is passed down by the father, not the mother. Science has proved this out, that the, the blood types determined by the father that, 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 the, that, that from the day of conception, the, bloods, uh, the blood of the mother never crosses the blood of, of the baby. All happens down with the father, uh, through the father. Jesus was born with his father's nature. Jesus was born spiritually alive. Jesus was born just like Adam was in the very beginning. That's why he's called last Adam. Now, what, what did he do? He demonstrated his authority. He demonstrated life in the spirit by healing the sick, by forgiving sin, by casting out devils. See how the spirit in him ruled over the natural and ruled over the forces of darkness coming in. And so he was the last Adam walking on this earth the way first Adam should have. But then what he did is, is, is he took into himself, he took our judgment. He took into himself our sin. And so the Bible says he tasted death for every man. He took our death. He experienced, yes, he experienced spiritual death in the sense that he was separated from God. He was dead. He was laid in the ground. And so all of human ha history was wrapped up in his and what happened on the cross. He took all of our sickness, all of our judgment, all of our sin, all of our mistakes. He took it all. He experienced our death, laid in the ground. But then God came in, the Spirit of God, and raised him up. And he is called now the firstborn from the dead. Listen. Firstborn, firstborn. This is, this is so important that you get this. And, and this is why this is so important. Firstborn, because when he died in the grave, he died to sin. Sin lost its control. There's nothing. It lost its allure. It lost any of that. Temptation, the whole deal. When he came out, he was born again by the Spirit of God with new life, the, the whole thing. Okay? It's just... You know, some people say Jesus wasn't born again. Well, he's called the firstborn from the dead. 
All right, so what does that mean? It means he was born out of the Spirit because, anyway, we'll, we'll get into the details of it. When you mix faith, when you, when you understand this truth, Jesus came into this world and died for sinners and was raised up so that we would have new life. When you mix faith with that and when you say, I receive that, I believe that. I believe that as when I believe that, then Jesus said, you must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. See, you were born of the flesh before and fleshly people. But now those who've answered the call and believe in Jesus Christ and were baptized into him, you are born of the spirit. Here's what happened. Your spirit man became born again, reconnected with the life of God. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. The Bible says you now have new life and now you can rule and reign in life out of the spirit the way God intended for us to from the very beginning. Amen. And that's human history in less than 10 minutes. Amen. Now, why is that so significant? Because now you're only dealing with uh, every, there's, a, there's a clear demarcation. This answers all the theological questions about, well, you know, does God allow sickness? Does God allow hard times? Does God... No, listen, the whole thing now is about whose offspring are you? I, you didn't hear me. Everything now is about whose child are you? Whose nature do you have? Which kingdom are you in? Okay? All right? So there is no crossing. Guys, listen to me. There is no crossing of the nature of old Adam to the nature of new Adam. Okay? There is not this, there is not this bridge that says... So, so, so when somebody asks you the question about, well, does God, you know, I think God has, is, is allowing me to be sick or put this sickness on me, that ain't right because I am a child of God. I am, I, am, I am like Jesus now. I've got a new nature now. Amen. See? And, and so, and it's about re restoration of original intent and original purpose. That's right. Okay? So sin, sin, sickness, and death could only rule over first Adam's children. I want depression, oppression, anxiety, that could only rule over first Adam's child. First Adam's offspring. See, but last Adam's offspring, it can't rule over them anymore. Sin can't rule over me. Sickness can't rule over me. Poverty can't rule over me. The devil can't just attack me at will. The devil, it's not the devil did this, the devil did that, the devil did that. We, we, we are too devil conscious in the church. It's time for us to be Jesus conscious. It's time for us to be victorious conscious. And so when you take this as a starting point, the Bible talks about by this you'll know the people that are children of the devil and those that are children of God. Children of first Adam that are influenced by the devil versus children of God. Listen, there's, it's a clear line. Now, having that understanding, I, I mean, I'm telling you, these ladies, I've never heard about two Adams. It's about two Adams. Both came to produce a race. And, and with that, you're either in one or the other. You're not both. That's right. That's right. Were you, when you were born again, you were adopted into a new family. And so you have, you're firmly planted in that. Stop trying to mix the two together. Well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Oh, you know, you know, you know uh, uh, I'm not perfect, just forgiven. And what, 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 what are we thinking about? We're identifying with first Adam. We're identifying and we're giving. And, and so by that, because now, listen, I don't know if you're ready for this. But now, because your spirit has been reborn, and now because you now have 
you, you, authority regained and dominion has been given unto you. Now, when you say things like, man, the flu season's coming around, I'll probably be the first one to get it. Man, the, uh, 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 I'm just, uh, I just can't get out of this funk that I'm in. Oh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm just depressed all the time. Um, oh, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm just forgiven. I'm, you know, I just, I'm, I'm going to mess up. I, I sin I, and all that. What you're doing now is from your spirit, man, you're actually giving authority to those things. That, and there's more force behind what you say than what a natural person out of first Adam says. Because you're in a different place now. You're in a different place now. It's not about, it's not about just the words of an unsaved person and what they're saying. It's about the words of a saved person that is speaking out of their spirit because the natural is only subject to the spirit realm. See? Totally different. It's a totally different deal over here. Now, um, with that said, we're going to dig into some scripture on this next week so that you've got a firm foundation that everything that I've just said is absolutely 100% the Word of God. Amen. Okay? But it's so clear now that what you can do is, is when the questions come, so why does God allow, you know, uh, babies to be kidnapped. Why does God allow all these bad things? Why, if God is so good like you're telling me, it's very clear. Adam allowed sin, death, and everything that comes on people now is because they're in first Adam. Wouldn't you like to get out of that and be in second Adam so you don't have to experience that anymore? Amen. Wouldn't you like to be born again so that you can be free from all of that? You know, honey, the reason why you're addicted is because you have no choice but to be addicted because you've, you, you're living a natural life. And, and so sin, sickness, and disease, it has control over you. And you can't get out of that mess. You can go through as many pr programs as you want to. And the reason why you keep cycling back through is because you're trying to do it out of the natural. But Jesus came to set you free. And if you'll be born again, you're going to be infused with a new power, a new grace that will set you free. And you'll start living from the Spirit and not living after the flesh anymore. Woo! That's the simplicity of the gospel. Moving them from being children of first Adam to being a child of last Adam. Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Stand with me, please. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Receive this word that's coming. Glory to God. There you go. Amen. He's describing life in the spirit. Yes. Life in the spirit is what he's describing. Mm. Yeah. Rob, Brother Rob talked about a spirit covenant. It's not a works covenant. It's a spirit covenant. Yeah. David said by the spirit two times. Mm. He said, the Lord is my rock, my strength, my high tower. And he said this. He said, he's the horn of my salvation. That word horn is an, one of the meanings of it is the word flask. Y'all know what a flask is? It's for somebody that's given to drink so he can take it with him all the time. We can drink of the Spirit at any time and draw water from the wells of salvation because Jesus said this when he talked about rivers of living water flowing out of your spirit. The first thing he said was, come unto me and drink. Lift your hands and take a drink this morning, praise God. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We drink of the Spirit this morning. Yes, Praise Lord. God. Let's yes. pray in the Spirit. Yes. Lord, we drink of the Spirit this morning. We draw water out of the wells of salvation on the side of us, Lord, because you lead us. You guide us in the ministry. You take us where we need to go. You tell us who to speak to. And then we pour out. We drink in and we pour out. We drink in and we pour out. Yes, Lord. We drink in and we pour out. Take a drink. Take a drink yes, of him, Lord, praise yes, God. Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. He loves for us to drink of him. He loves for us to drink from him. Yes, Lord. He loves for yes, us to Lord. ask from him. Come on. Praise God. In Jesus. Name. Just Friday, my daughter-in-law asked me for something. She's only been married to my son for a short period of time, and we told her the day they got married that nobody will ever love you more than your own parents. Yes. Will. Now, I know I meant that, but maybe she didn't know that I meant that. 
But the other day she asked me for something just simple. We we're going to do some work at her house. And she said, would you bring your weed eater? And that blessed me so much. Mm. And I, immediately the Spirit of God said on the inside of me, it blesses me when you ask. It blesses me when you ask. Yeah. Not too long ago, there was a situation in my life, and I asked the Lord about it. And he said, if you ask me, I'll fix it. Amen. Now, there's a family in here today, maybe more than one, that needs something fixed, and you can't fix it. Come on. You've come to the end of yourself, and now it's time to draw on the grace that's sufficient, yes. that will lift and will take care of that situation. That's right. And he said, all you have to do is ask. Praise God. Let's lift our hands. If it applies to you as well, and you need something you, fixed Father. that you can't fix, maybe it's a relationship, yes, maybe it's a Lord. job situation, maybe it's a child, let's ask him, Father, in Jesus' name, we Father, ask you to Jesus fix that. Name. Oh, Lord, we, we depend on the grace that's sufficient to lift us, and we drink in of you right now, and, Lord, we take it right now. In we Jesus ask you name. in the name of Jesus to fix that. Whatever it is, that family that I'm speaking of, fix it, Lord. Surround yes, them with Lord. faith and yes, love. Lord. Yes, Lord. That situation is fixed. Praise God. It's Amen. fixed. Amen. And you'll see it. Yes, Lord. You'll see it. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Amen.